Khan, Khan, all praises to the most side to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, through a son Yahweh Shai. Shalom to the 12 tribes of Israel. The mighty men from the light of Zion will introduce himself. Hallelujah. Shalom, shalom. Uh, this is Captain Kadash from the light of Zion. Hallelujah. Khan Shalom. This is Captain Zamar, Lozili County. All praise to the Most High Yahweh. Shalom, Shalom. Khan Shalom, Shalom. All praises to the Prophet from Isaac and Jacob. This is Captain Kai Rum from the Light of Zion. Hallelujah. Khan, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. This is Captain Nathania Allah from the Light of Zion. Hallelujah. Shalom. Khan, shalom, Shalom. This is your officer Obadiah from the Light of Zion. Shalom, Israel. Shabbat Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. This is Officer Ali from the Light of Zion. Khan. Khan. All praise to the Most High, to the Prophet of Isaac and Jacob. Shalom to the twelve tribes of Israel. All praise to the Most High, to water for everybody that's tuning in. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe to the video. Turn on post notifications. Send it to your friends and family. Right, that's waking up in this truth that you planted those spiritual seeds on. Right, make sure they can receive this word. Right, and, and receive it with all readiness of mind. All praise to the Most High, to the Power of Abraham and Jacob. So we want to um just you know go into a couple of things you know in regards to being sober and vigilant. Right, because um as we call ourselves watchmen, right, the servants of the Most High, we have to make sure our people have it in their spirit to constantly to be prayed up, right, and prepared for the day of the Lord. Right, to be prepared for the judgment that the Most High is going to bring upon this earth. So uh, before we get started, let's open up the book of Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. Um, Officer Asher, Baba Gushar, can you bring that out, King? Yeah, I got it. This is the book of Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Whatsoever you do word, it's a lot. Whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of, of Amashach and Havashai, giving thanks to the outer one and the Father by him. Con, so everything that we do in word or deed, we give all glory and praise to the Most High Yahweh through a son of Mashiach Yahweh Shai, right? Through whom made the worlds, right? So um, let me get the book of Isaiah 62 and 6, Papa Bashar. The book of Isaiah chapter 62, verse 6. Because this is the this is the duty as the watchman, right? To wake up our people to what's going on in these last days, right? Let me let me get the book of Isaiah 62, Papa Bashar, verse 6. Oh, this is the book of Isaiah chapter 62. In verse 6, right? I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O mm -hmm. Jerusalem, right? which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Right. Watchmen upon thy walls, meaning what? You have men that's protecting the community, protecting the family, right? For what? What are they watching for? Right? For the destruction, right? For the enemy, right? For different attacks that spiritually or physically that may come upon the children of Israel. Right, we are those watchmen. We are uh, what's they call uh, the line of defense, right? The line of defense, if I'm not mistaken, is, I think that's the terminology. Uh, Captain Nathaniela may correct me on that, right? Uh -huh. But we 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 are the first line of defense or the line of defense, right, for the children of Israel. Uh -huh. We have to be the we have to be those watchmen to be able to protect our people from this world, man, and from the enemy that's in this flesh. Right. Keep going on that, King. Con, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, right. which shall never hold their peace mm -hmm. day nor night. Day nor night. So we have to constantly be circumspect, right? Watch and pray and be vigilant day or night. Because the enemy walketh about seeking who we may devour. We have to be prepared for these different things. We have to have, we have to ask the most side that he gives us that spiritual discernment, that keen sense in the spirit. To be able to discern when these different spirits start to happen. And we have to be prepared to be able to overcome them, right? And to and to battle them. Let me get the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15. Right? The book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15, and then um to 16. Right? So like yeah, yeah, for, for verse 15 through 17. We're gonna jump into this article. Con, right? this is the book. I got you. Five Con. of Ephesians 5 and 15. Con. This is the book of Ephesians, chapter 5 and verse 15. Right. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Right, as wise. And what is that? How do we become wise? What is that wisdom? 
keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. Right, not as fool, but as wise. That wisdom that we receive on and how to become wise is by keeping his law, statutes, and the commandments. We have to walk circumspectly, meaning what? We have to walk in accordance with the understanding of the Most High. Right, watching our steps, being sober and vigilant. Right, we have to walk circumspectly. Keep going. Redeeming the time. Observing the times. Right, seeing the times that we're in. Keep going. Because the days are evil. Because the what? Because the days are evil. The days are evil. We're going to go into <clears throat> one of these days and the evil of these days. That's occurring, man. Right? So let's go ahead and play this article. Right? Fair, we're going to put the fair use in the bio so YouTube understands. Right? But let, let's understand. Let's go into this. Right? It says, we're deeming the time because the days are evil. So let's watch what's going on here. Right? It says, black man found with severed head was targeted by white men, attorney says. Right? Let's get into it. Family. You sound kind of low, family. It, I, I got it, it, it's it, I think it's the audio. I don't think they really put the mic towards the prayer. I think that's really how how the audio oh, is okay. Cut Con, Con. Con. okay. So lucky. Con, you good, King. This was not a natural killer. Now, this was not a natural death. This that is bizarre. Look at this, man. They cut open his skull. That is insane. Those are those are salon. Those are clean cuts, man. Those are not like Sick. You can't tell me that an animal or a beast no. can can evenly slice off a, a, a grown man's head. What what animal is doing that? I mean, what right. animal I don't... has? I know a I know a bear could probably maul you down, and um, I really don't know. But I don't even, know what animal could that could do that. But even then, you would see. Like uh, yeah, so like you, uh, and this is how you could tell that. The, the damn so-called white man or the, they they Esau man he said they, in Genesis 25 said he was a cunning hunter man right so only a, a hunter does things like this man like just cut the brother the top of the brother head off cut his cut his dang that's crazy man that's wicked uh, they're probably gonna Hope, I don't know, maybe in the middle of the speech they'll get the marchers ready. Right, right, right. You already know it's a cycle lot. We, we actually got to create that diagram, right? Um, we got to create that cycle diagram, right? There's a, a brother that sadly gets shot down by a white man. You got the trial. You got the marching, right? It subsides. And it starts all over again. The brother God, gets shot the football down. Games come the, back the, on. The, right, the, the football games, games come back come on. Back right, on. it's a cycle. We got to make that diagram. Get the COVID right? check back on. So right, you, right, right. You know, <laughs> get and the distractions going, and, and then somebody good. else dies again. Right, that's, that'll be a good cycle. Good. Come on, we need to get. We need to create that because that is definitely. Uh, it's just a circle, man. Right. Let me keep it going on that. Represents a young man who was killed. His head was severed. From his body, his vertebrae, his spinal cord was in another spot they discovered away from his severed head. They have recently found remains that they believe are also Racine Carter at another part of where he went missing. And what that tells us is that this was a nefarious act. This was an evil act. Somebody murdered Racine Carter. And we cannot let them get away with this. And so today, we are calling for the Department of Justice to open an investigation as to what happened to Rasheem Carter. Somebody seen what happened to Rasheem 
and, and it doesn't make any sense at all because the, the text message that his mother got before he went missing is a part of the clue to solving this murder. And it's, it has to be investigated. Do you want to read a tip? Please? Okay. Uh, this was on uh, October the 1st. My son texted me. This was after uh, him and I had gotten off the phone. He said, me and the owner of this company not seeing eye to eye, mom. His name, which I can't say at this time, but if anything happened to me, He's responsible for it. I'm too smart, Mama. He got these guys wanting to kill me. And that's what he sent to me. And then he went missing. And then his remains were found with his head dismembered from his body, his spinal cord separated from his head, and his other body parts are still missing. Tiffany deserves answers. This community deserves answers. Justice for Rasheen Carter. Justice for Rasheen Carter. Justice for Rasheen Carter. They sound like zombies. I ain't gonna lie. It's sick. It's really yeah. sick. Come on, I got a quick precept. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 49. Oh, let's start at 50. A nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of old, nor show favor to the young. You know what I'm saying? We see that what this, what this nation is, man. Like, I don't know no other nation of people that do things like this to our people, man. Like, you know, you got the Arabs, they set up shop. The Chinese, they set up shop. You know what I'm saying? But the white people, they just perpetually doing these hate crimes to us, man. But we're supposed to be the quote-unquote hate group. You know what I'm saying? So... And that and that that brings me on to another point. Just to let me back off what you're saying, because uh, it's like, so when we go out into the streets and the highways and the byways, we're telling our people keep the commandments and things like that, and we're telling the judgments of the other nations. It's like these are stories that continue to happen over and over and over again. But people look at us and call us the devil. Say we preaching the devil, the the doctrines of devils. When we say there has to be a judgment for all of these things and the bloodshed that is be sh that has been shed for the children of Israel, when you look at heinous crimes like this, it's like, come on now, it's like, so we just sweep that under the rug and we supposed to be happy go lucky and think everything is fine? No, there has to be a recompense for that. You know what I'm saying? All of these things that they're doing to the children of Israel, the blood they gotta pay back. Right? Can we get that in the book of Numbers real quick? Right, they gotta pay back. The people that shed uh the blood of the children of Israel, right? They gotta they gotta pay this back in blood. That's just how it goes. What's that numbers chapter thirty three? Con thirty five and thirty three. Thirty five, thirty three. Con, let's get that real quick. Oh. Con, I got you. Just the book of Numbers chapter thirty five and verse thirty three. Con. So ye shall not pollute the land where ye are, for blood it defileth the land, and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. Right. So America cannot be cleansed. It has to be cleansed by the people who shed the children of Israel's blood. Everybody that has died in America, everybody that has died in the land of their captivity by the hand of their enemy. These people have to pay these things back in blood. That's the law, right? That's how the most high, that's how the Lord made things. So these people think they're just continually getting away with these things. Like, this is not the first brother these things have happened to. When you look at somebody like, you know, we talk about like Jelani Day, right? We talk about Kendrick uh, Johnson. I think that was his last name. They found this brother rolled yeah. up in the mat with his organs missing. Right. And to this day, we haven't heard anything about that. And they think we just forget about these things. Like brothers are going literally. Think about this: grown men are going missing, being murdered and killed, and they're saying that an animal 
dismembered somebody in the wood. Come on, man. That is the same. You know what's you know wicked up? Some of these Christian pastors, when we bring this up for our people to recognize it and to acknowledge it, they say, oh, y'all appealing to emotion, right? We They'll just, say we, you were ra race baiting. Race baiting, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're race baiting. We're, we're just trying to appeal to emotion and race, right? Con. And that, let's and that's get, the yeah, go ahead. Go Con, ahead. let's deal with that. Let's get Matthew chapter 5 real quick. Because a lot of times, this is the scripture, and I think this is why we say, you know, modern day Christianity is one of the worst things you can ever teach a man. Right. Because it teaches a man how you shouldn't fight back, you should be docile, mm -hmm. yeah, and we shouldn't be men of war, we shouldn't be waging war, and things like that. Like, we should, like, once these things happen, brother get his head cut off, now we're just supposed to be quiet and pray to the Lord about it. Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't pray to the Lord, but there should be action that follows up with that. Right. Right. And I'm not going to go into detail, but what I'm saying is if these things continually happen over and over and over again, there's a reason why. One, the other nations feel like they can get away with it. Right. They feel like this is OK. And then two, the root cause, cause root analysis is that we have to keep the commandments of the Most High. Come um, all right, let's get Matthew chapter 5 real quick. Let's start at verse um, 30. I think it's like 33. So, uh, yeah, let's get that, man. What you want? What do you want? Well, let's get to the point first, and I, and I, I want to prove something. Let's go Go to verse um, uh, Go to verse 43. Come. This is the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 43. Ye mm -hmm. have heard. That has been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Right. So, first of all, there's two things we got to realize. One, who is Christ speaking to? And then two, where are they pulling this information from? It right. says, ye have heard that it has been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and what? And hate thine enemy. All right. Keep reading. Come. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Mm-hmm. Bless them that curse you. Right. Do good to them that hate you. Right. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Right. So we have to realize who the audience is here. It's very simple. When Christ is quoting all these things, he understood that thou shalt love thy neighbor. These commandments or these laws were strictly given to the children of Israel. So let's break it down. What it is saying is that if I have a brother or a sister of my own people and I'm having arts or I got issues with them, right? And we beefing back and forth, they're saying, let it go. Love your neighbor, right? Love, love them, right? You got to, scripture say, walk with wisdom towards those that are without, your own people, your brother. This is not talking about other nations of people, right? Because there's many instances in the scriptures where, if they crossed that line of dealing with the children of Israel in the wrong way, that there was a price to pay for that. Right. So we know in this scripture that when it says love your enemy, because this is what they hold on to. When we read, go back to the front of the video. Let's hold this place where we at 319. Mm -hmm. Go yeah. back to the front of the video. Open the video. Right. Mm -hmm. Rewind that all the way back. From the from the beginning? Yeah. I want to I, I just want to show the, the audience what is happening. Right. Right. This First is play. right. Here we go once again, and, and there's this scripture that we just read is the reason why people do this. They did the same thing for the Buffalo shooting. This was not. Right? They did the same thing for Dylan Roof. Right. They do the same thing for all the black men and black black women who have been killed across America. Why? Because Christianity teaches them. That no matter what these people do to you, you shall love them. Right. I got a precept. But they're not breaking the scriptures down appropriately. All right, go uh -huh. ahead. Come. Come. This is the book of Micah, chapter 7, verse 6. Just to understand who that enemy you're supposed to love is. Right? Actually, let me first get let me first get that in the law. Right? So we can understand. Even in the law, we understand your brother could be your enemy. Come. The book of Exodus, chapter 23, verse 4. 
if thou if thou meet thine enemy's ox or his donkey going astray, thou shalt surely bring it back to him again. If thou see the, the donkey of him that hateth thee lying under his burden and wouldest forbear to help him, thou shalt surely help with him. So this is showing you within the law. We understand when you read the law, if it goes into how to deal with your brother, right? If you guys get into an argumentation, if there's conflict between your brother, the scriptures talk about if you and your brother strove together. That's how that's the terminology that they use, right? If you guys strove together, there's laws in place for when certain things happen with your brother. If y'all get to that point, there's a law for that, right? So the most high is giving you the understanding, even within the law, the law, how to deal with their brother, even if you quote unquote hate him. You still have to help him. You still it says you cannot forbear to help him. Meaning you have to put that aside and still have love for your brother at the end of the day, man. The law goes into detail in that. Right? Let me get the book of Micah chapter 7, verse 6. Let me get the book of Micah chapter 7, verse 6. Baba Gusha, the book of Micah chapter 7, verse 6. And I'm going to get the scripture this to demonstrate how within the law, there's laws that govern, that are applied when you and your brother, quote unquote, if you have a, if you have a beef with your brother, quote unquote, how y'all supposed to handle each other? Through the law. So, right. it. So, let me get that. It's the book of Micah chapter 7, verse 6. For, for the son dishonoreth, for the son dishonoreth the father, mm -hmm. the daughter riseth up against her mother, the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his, of his own house. Right. So a man's enemies are they of his own house? We see that that's through the scriptures. That's who the enemy that them of your own nation. We see the same thing with David and Saul. Let me get that at First Samuel 24 and 17. Right? First Samuel 24 and That's 17. The spirit. I was literally turning there. Come. Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on, praises. Right? First Samuel 24 and 17. Let's start right there. So because we see it's within your nation, your brothers, man. That's who your brothers is. Got it. Right? They, they, these other nations are not governed by the same things that we're governed by. How can they be my brother? That doesn't make any sense, man. Right? Let me get 1 Samuel 24, 24 and 17, Bubba Gashaw. This is the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 24, verse 17. And he said to David, Thou art more righteous than I, for thou hast rewarded me good, whereas I have rewarded thee evil. I think you go on, Okay, Khan, go ahead. Yeah, keep going. Khan, and thou hast showed this day how that how that though thou hast dealt well with me for as much as when the Most High had delivered me into thine hand, thou killedest me not. Meaning what? He's saying, yo, you, you like, you should have, I should have been punished for how I was treating you. Right? The Most High delivered me into your hand you should have killed me, right? But what did he say to him, right? Keep going. Done. For if a man find his enemy. For if a man find his enemy, he's referencing him. Saul is referencing himself to David as his enemy. Keep going. Done. For if a man find his enemy, will he let him go well away? Right. Wherefore, the most high reward thee good for that thou hast done unto me this day. So he's saying as, as if, if any man finds his enemy, he's going to want to take his head off. It's on sight. Come. Right? And that, that's, that, oh, right? Sorry, go ahead. Right? Uh, come on. But that's showing you how he's saying, yo, as your enemy, even though you hate me, you still showed me that love. You still showed me that grace. But the per but the historical context that we see here is that it's between two brothers or two men of the same nation. That's the point. All right, go ahead, King. And I had another Con point I want to bring up. Con 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 um, 
the thing is too is um with like Christianity, it 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 uh it makes it so you love everybody. You know, we are the world and stuff. Michael Jackson. You know, but the thing is, is is like like that scripture right there. They would say those enemies would be everybody instead of just um your own people. You know, especially when it says, but I tell you, you know, what I'm saying they're trying to they they would harp harking onto those things very hard. But my thing is is um where in the Bible do you see like an- another nation being called a friend? You know what I'm saying, or another nation being called every time we deal with other nations, it usually says they're an enemy. Or they're against you, Calm. you know, in the scriptures, you know, and you don't ever see where it says that another nation is um, a friend or, you know, you got Jethro, the father in law at certain times. But at the end of the day, like you always see like the, all the nations always come against them and they're called enemy. Con, um, I had a couple more points I wanted to bring up. So, like, um, so we demonstrated that the enemy of your own people is your brother. We read that in Exodus 23. We read that in 1 Samuel 20, uh, 24. We read that in Micah 7. Too much evidence to demonstrate that your brother is the one that is being referred to in Matthew 5, right? But let's also go into the law about if there is a, 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 just to demonstrate how if within the law, there's things that is in place for when you do hate your brother. When that, when, when that hate is not just hate, but y'all even start fighting, Give me Exodus 21 and 18, right? The book of Exodus 21 and 18. Let's go through the law. Because the law demonstrates what it means, how, how, what to do with your brother, man, right? This is, this is what the law is saying, right? Exodus 21 and 18, right? Baba Gashal, can somebody read that? Con, can I be heard? Con, I got you. Con, anybody? Con, 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 con. I don't know what's going on. Just now. Um, Exodus 22 and 16? Uh, 21 and 18. Con, it's the book of Exodus chapter 21, verse 18. Right. And if men strive together and one smite another with a stone. Now, let, with let, his... Right, let's break it down. And, and if men strive together, meaning what? If they're beefing, they fighting, they throwing hands, they throwing haymakers, Right. We're seeing what hap- what's demonstrated in the law when, when you have a beef or hatred with your brother. Y'all striving together. Right? Keep reading. And one smiteth another with the stone. He took a stone. Right? He said, all right. He ain't dropping with these haymakers I'm throwing. Hold on right quick. Right? Hold on. And he, right? Hit some one time with a stone. Keep going. Or with his fist. Right, he had one one good haymaker. Keep going. And he died not. Right. But keepeth his bed. But now the brother that he hated, he he got in a fight with him, hit him with a stone, right? Hit him with an uppercut, right? But now he's bedridden. Keep going. If he rise again and walk abroad upon his staff, right? Then shall he that smote him be quit. Right. Only he shall pay for the loss of his time. Now he has right. Now he has to restore the loss of, of his time. Meaning the time that he was spent in that bed, now he has to uh, 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 provide for that man, right? He has to now uh, uh, pay his bills, right? Provide him the things that he needs on for, for on a day to day basis, right? Keep going. Uh, and co- only he shall pay for the the loss of his time, and shall cause him to be thoroughly healed, and shall cause him to be thoroughly healed. So we see within the law. The Most High gave the understanding of what to do when you have issues with your brother, even when it even gets to that point where y'all start throwing stones at each other. Right? This is what the Most High is going into. This is the understanding that comes with loving your enemy. You don't want to be put in that position now. Now the brother's bedridden. Now you got to wait till he thoroughly heals. You got to pay for his loss of time. All this is within the law and how you treat your brother. Right? He's saying, don't even do that to your brother, man. Right, and I had like one last scripture. This just so this to demonstrate the enemies. Look what the Most High said about our enemies and what He would do to our enemies if we obey Him. Give me the book of Exodus twenty three and twenty two. Con, right. I got you. Start at verse Exodus uh, yeah twenty. Exodus start at verse yeah twenty uh, uh twenty twenty one. Salak, yeah, start at verse twenty one. 
Right. Well, this is the book of Exodus, chapter 23 and verse 21. Right. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions. Right. So for my the, name, mm -hmm. lock it. Go, go ahead, King. For my name is in him. Right. So for his reputation is in him. Right. You understand that this angel here, why right, will also send out the same judgments that the Most High will send out. Right. Saying obey him. And what would happen if we obey him? What would the most I be to our enemies? Keep going. Con verse 22. But right? if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies. Right. And an adversary unto thine adversary. Right. The other nations don't have that type of that 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 type of covenant. Right. They don't have that type of agreement. Right. It was only given unto us. That the Most High would have his angels be an enemy to our enemies. Right? The Most High said he will be an enemy to our enemies when we obey his voice, man. Right? So this is why we have to get the full understanding and understand the whole role, man. Right? And I yield on that. Con, let's keep playing the video up. Matter of fact, back it up about like 10 or 20 seconds because I want to bring a precept out about this. His head and his other body parts are still missing. Tiffany deserves answers. This community deserves answers. Justice for Rasheen Carter. Justice for Rasheen Carter. Let's, let's, let's pull the, the classic precept, Lamentations chapter 4. Give her <laughs> bro, that sounds so cringy, bro. Oh, <laughs> it's it's bad. Cringy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's bad. Here we are. That is crazy. It's like they, it's, it's like they went in the room and they practiced that. Like, like they've done this. Yeah, before. they sound like yeah. look like acting. Like yes. you don't even feel like I don't even feel nothing from you. This, don't see bro. no it's rage. Sad to say, like, right. There's fine. no rage, no emotion. Fine. If it's, somebody kill your family member, I, you think. That's about your kid. Come on, man. Yeah, bro. I'm not even gonna be on this news channel. <laughs> <laughs> then, yeah, they go. They gonna cut the tape short. Right. Nah, you go. They, I would be on the news locked up. <laughs> right. Um. <laughs> Come. Like, uh, you know, brother, like your this. family member. You know, someone you ride. Wh whoever. You know, someone that you love. Right. You know what I'm saying? You don't. I don't know, man. This is just, right. This you won't. You're not gonna crazy. catch me on the news saying justice. <laughs> right. Just right. holding my fist up like it's back in the uh the uh nineteen sixties. Right. I'm not doing it. All right. We become docile, man. I'm telling you, like this thing is sick. And 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 the root cause of this situation going on here is Christianity. The Christian church taught us how to be this way. It reminds me of how slave, like if anybody has done any type of history research or like you know on what slave masters used to do to the slaves using our book it would make them docile like they would show them like what i'm doing to you is okay right me killing you chopping your son's head and all of these things dragging you from trucks and hanging you from trees these things i'm allowed to do all you need to do is ask god right for forgiveness and ask him to get uh for vengeance and things like that justice right that's not how the scriptures work man christianity is a drug and it's sick it has poisoned the minds of our people all right so let's get limitations chapter 4 verse 17 real quick con is the book of limitations chapter 4 verse 17 on the classic three set as for us our eyes as yet failed for our vain help so as the as for the israelites the jews hebrews our eyes have yet failed. These people, we have, to, how many times, this is not the first time, right? How many times have we seen this on the news? Justice, we, we need answers. Justice, you're asking your enemy to give you answers about what they did to y'all, right? But a lot of people don't even understand. You know, an, another problem to this is that they don't even understand that they have an enemy. And that's a dangerous place to be in. Imagine a zebra or, or you know, uh, what, an antelope. They don't know that the lion is out to get them. 
we have to be circumspect. Right? Read that one more time, Mark. Con, as for us, our eyes as yet failed for our vain help. Mm -hmm. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. America cannot save us. You're asking for answers and justice from a country that did these things to you. So when we look at this, this is really what you call insanity because there's like, we do the same thing, same result. You go into the doctor that's poisoning you for, uh, for medicine. Right. Right. Same thing. This country, and this is why we know that we Israelites too. Like they, when scriptures talk about making in samples examples, this is how we know we Israelites. All right. We're in the, we're in the, the country of our enemy. We're in the land of our enemy. Give me Baruch chapter three real quick. Come on, while you get that, that, that just reminds me of like when you were talking about the animals, I just envisioned like a, a lion just chewing on a zebra's tail and he looking back and saying, Stop, stop. <laughs> right. You know, perfect example. But we don't know we have an enemy. We think that everybody is our friend. We think that we're just made equal. Slavery went away. They took the yokes of iron off our neck and everything's fine. After 1960, you know, after this, you know, we segregated and all of these things, integrated, Salakia, right? We think that everything's cool now, but it's not. You still got an enemy till this day. So we need to wake up. That's why we go on the streets and we say, awake out of your deep sleep, Israel. All right. Baruch chapter three and verse eight, I believe it is. Somebody could read that for me. All right. Baruch chapter three and verse eight. You know what? I could get it. Hold on one second. Give me a second. So, like, I have my mic here. Just go look at Baruch chapter 3 and verse 8. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, mm -hmm. where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse. Right? So, when we when we got to worry about things like this, like I said, this is not the first time an instance like this has happened. Right? We brought up the situation with Jelani Day. Right. We brought up the situation with Kendrick Johnson, brothers missing organs and eyes. These are real stories. This is not a fairy tale. We're talking about real life. This is not a lifetime movie, man. This is not a BT commercial. This is real life. This is really happening. Right. It says, behold, we are yet this day up until this current day. The scriptures come into life. We are yet this day in our captivity. Read on. Where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and, recur and a curse, mm -hmm. and to be subject to payments. All of these things are payments because of what? Read on. According to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the Most High, our power. Right, because of all of these things we did against the Lord. These and our enemies can touch us. The other nations can touch us because we're not worried about keeping the commandments of God. If we read the laws, if we understood the heritage of our forefathers, we attended the, 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 the Shabbat days and things like that where we would be fed these things, we would know what's outside. We would know that we need to be circumspect, to be alert, to be uh, a watchman for your brother, right? Not trusting your enemy. That's a big one. If we know not to trust your enemy, you can always be on alert when you're around them. But when you let your guard down, these are things that can happen, right? There's a sister who, you know, she was with the enemy. I forgot what, what uh, state this was in, you know, went to the her co-worker's house. The lady ended up dead. They, they had like a slumber party. Eve around a whole bunch of Edomites. I, I remember that. I seen that. Talking about she fell off the balcony. Come on, man. Right. She just ended up dead. Never trust thine enemy. That's what the Lord said, right? Read on, not Salaki. Khan. According to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the most higher power, mm -hmm. here, Israel, the commandments of life, 
give ear to understand wisdom. Yeah, I think that's it on that. Must no, keep, keep reading. reading. No, keep reading. No, okay, come Okay, come So, so verse nine it says, "Here is with the commandments of life. By the commandments we live, and when we break them, we don't adhere to the commandments. We die." It says, "Give ear to understand wisdom. Understand how to apply the things that we're reading in this book." All right, keep reading. How happeneth it, Israel, that thou art in thine enemy's land, that mm -hmm. thou art waxen old in a strange country, mm -hmm. that thou art defiled with the dead? So it's it's asking, how did this happen? How did we get to this point? How are you waxing old in your in the in your stranger's country, the land of your enemies? Right, read on. Go on that thou art counted with them that go down into the grave. We counted with the dead from the beginning. Right? When we talk about st statistics that are against us, we counted dead. We counted not to be living already. Right? Keep reading. Thou hast forsaken the fountain of wisdom. Mm -hmm. For if thou hadst walked in the way of the Most High, thou shouldest have dwelled in peace forever. Thou shalt, we should have dwelled in peace forever, only if we had walked in the way of the Most High. But right now, we are not walking in the way of the Most High, which is why these things happen. And when you hear us screaming on, on the side of the street, it's not just us doing this because we're crazy. Not just us doing it because we want to fight somebody. We're doing it because we love our people and we want them to return. So these things do not happen to us any longer. There was a song by Bob Marley. He said, man, listen, many more have to die and he don't know why. But guess what? We know why. We understand it's because we don't want to adhere to what the Most High has been telling us. So we have to put accountability on both ends of the stick. Right? It's very important. All right, let's continue playing the video unless somebody else got more scriptures they want to bring out. Come on, I had a quick precept. One second. This is the book of First Thessalonians, chapter five, and verse three. When people is this in a um, New Living Translation? When people are saying everything is peaceful and secure, then disaster will fall on them as suddenly as a pregnant woman's labor pains begin, and there will be no escape. So we see here, man. They think everything's just peaceful and it's cool. You know, this is just not some end time prophecy. This this precept is um it speaks volumes to everything. Because right now we think we're in a peaceful state, you know, everything's all good. But it, the most high can send that judgment anytime, man. So we got to keep these commandments, as Captain Kadash was saying just now. Khan, all praises. Let's continue with the video. Art. For Rasheen Carter. Justice for Rasheen Carter. Here we are, 2023, some 70 years after the 50s. We thought we had advanced chair of Mississippi. I've been a Mississippian for all 46 years of my life, and I've never heard of a crime this horrific in my life. I was not living during the time of Emmett Till. I heard about that and read about it in the history books, but I thought we had progressed in Mississippi. But we are living in the Jim Crow era 2.0, and there seems to be a surge of white supremacy. There's no reason that Rasheem Carter should have been killed. He was dutifully and gainfully employed, just trying to make a living for his young, young child, and ends up dead, chased by what we believe to be a white supremacists, a lynch mob. And so we're gonna stand with Attorney Crump and stand with this family to fight for justice. We need the Civil Rights Division of the Department of Justice and the highest levels of the government to come to our defense in Mississippi. Amen. Because it's wise for Carter's today, it could be my family tomorrow. It could be any black American in Mississippi. It could be any of us. There is a new surge of white supremacy and none of us should feel safe until all of us feel safe. And so we will fight for justice until the end. Watch breaking news on so when they, even, when they even say, the mother. You see the mother's face. It's like it's, I don't know, man. It just look nonchalant. Yeah, it's bad. It's, it's crazy. It's bad. It's, the the question is, breaking. what what do they expect to have when they say justice? What is justice for them? All right. What is justice? Because we understand what justice is in the Bible versus the world's justice. 
So what do they do? Find the man, then he gets locked up, sentenced to prison. He still got his life. Right? That's not what you call real justice. Right? Real justice is that the man got to be put down. All right? You take a man's life, you got to give your life for that life. It's very simple. And I can guarantee you when they sit around praying, they're not asking for these things. They're not asking. When they pray, they're not asking for the destruction of their enemies. Right? There's a big difference. All right? Go ahead, Alex Lockett. Was found must be a man, black man, dis uh, dismembered body was found. Initially, they said, "Well, this must be the doing of an animal." Put up the picture for a mask. You see, the family of this 25-year-old deceased black male. His name was Rashim Carter. Uh, this was in Mississippi. That family decided to push the issue. A Mississippi black man was found dead one month after going to local authorities, wanting help from the federal government. They want help from the federal government to investigate his death. Carter's uh, decapitated body was found in a place called Taylorsville, Mississippi. He reportedly went to the police department on October 1st, 2022, asking for help, expressing he had been chased by a group of white men in trucks. This all before he texted his mother, Tiffany Carter, that, and I quote, three truckloads of white guys were trying to kill him and shouting racial slurs. So then, told him, she then told him, go to the police, right? Dutiful. This revolutionary toothbrush is taking the world by. So like it looks. Now, now the new sheriff heard? of Taylorsville Police Department. So like it, can y'all hear me? So like, so like, my bad. You can hear me? Oh, on? Come on, come on, I can hear you, my bad. Come on, Salakia. Yeah. Yeah. Con, Salakia, let's go back to Lamentation chapter four real quick. Con, right. got it. We're gonna get that next verse. I think it was verse 18. Con, verse 18. It's the book of Lamentation mm -hmm. chapter four, verse 18. They hunt our steps that we cannot say it go again. Our, they hunt our steps that we cannot go right. in our so, street. Rewind the video just a little bit, Ox. Just a little bit. All right. White men in trucks, right? Quick story. I remember um, me and a couple of brothers, we went up to Tallahassee one time, and a similar situation like this happened to us, right? You know, a bunch of, bunch of Edomites deep in the truck, right? Passing by, racial slurs, all of this nonsense, right? The South is different, man. The South is different. And I want everybody that's listening to this to understand that this could have been any one of us. All right. Especially when you're in the world, this could be any one of us. This is a young, young, average black dude. You know what I'm saying? 25 years old. Remind me of somebody we probably would chill with, hang with. All right. And now he's gone because of his enemy. All right. I'll play that video uh, from that part. Told him. She then told him, go to the police. So then told him, she then told him, go to the police, right? Dutiful young man. Oh, the white guy were trying to kill him and shouting racial slurs. Mm. So then told him, she then told him, go to the police, right? It's all good. Dutiful we, young man. Point. Right, so you Now got, the new sheriff of hunt, hunting the brother's steps, looking for him in trucks, from my understanding, the brother was, you know, he was on the go or on the run for a few days, right? Went to the police station not once, but twice. Not only that, he proceeded to call his mother, right? Told his mother that he's in danger. She sends somebody up there, Long, very long story short, they get up there, he's missing. They can't find this brother for a whole month. He's gone. 
They finally find this brother and they find bones. All right. Read verse 18 again. I find uh, it's the book of Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 18. They hunt our steps that we cannot go in our streets. Can't go our no. end is keep reading. Our end is near. Our days are fulfilled, for our end is come. Our persecutors are swifter than the eagles of heaven. They pursued us upon the mountains. They laid wait for us in the wilderness. The breath of our nostrils, the anointed of the Most High, was taken in their pits. And it the was taken in their pits, right? They took this brother's life. We know this wasn't no, he just passed out and he just happened to die in the woods or the forest. That didn't happen. He told his mother specifically, he said, if anything happens to me, just know that so-and-so did it. All right. How do you get around that? Now, I, just, um, I, uh, I, got a, I got a quick piece up. Um, it's a lot. It's the book of Lamentations, chapter 3 and verse 47. Fear and a snare is come upon us, desolation and destruction. Mine eye runneth down with rivers of water for the destruction of the daughter of my people. My eye trickleth down and ce ceaseth not without intermission till the Lord look down and, be and behold from heaven. My eye affected mine heart because of all the daughters of my city. Mine enemies chased me sore like a bird without cause. They have cut off my life in the dungeon and cast a stone upon me. So basically what this scripture is, talk, is talking about is that uh, our, we're mourning right now. Like the brothers, the brothers that you that you see up here upon this panel, like we we're, we're hurt by seeing these things. You know what I'm saying? And as well as seeing our people getting chased, just like this brother, he was being chased. His enemies was chasing him sorely. Like a bird without cause. What reason would they have to mess with this man? What legitimate excuse could they say? Oh, we we was riding three, uh, three uh, three trucks deep just to cut just for this man. And then and then it even goes further as to saying that they have cut off my life in the dungeon. They they cut this man's life short. But we know in the script we know in the scriptures that that. Esau has a perpetual hatred against us. They want to see us dead. They they they're jealous. They're jealous of us because that that uh that we have the Most High, and they got rejected of the Most High. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I yield. I yield for my point. You know what I'm saying? Con, con, a lot. This is, uh, uh, you hit the nail right on the head. I don't know if you hear me. Try uh, to Uh, hold on. Actually, never mind. It's a lot. Con, can you hear me? Con. Con, can you hear me clearly now? Con, no, I was saying Captain Zamar. Oh, oh. Con, but that was a powerful point that you brought up, um, Asher. That's a powerful precept, right? And that just reminded me, that just um, reminded me of um, the book of Esther. I just wanted to read this because that's kind of what sparked my, my memory. This is book of Esther, chapter 8, verse 6. It says... For how can I endure to see the evil that shall come unto my people? Or how can I endure to see the destruction of my kindred? So we see Esther, she was in the spirit letting you know she couldn't just sit there and look at the evil that's being done to her people, man. Right? And just watch it happen. We can't endure these things, man. Right? And obviously when you read the book of Esther, you see what happens, right? But we understand this is the frustration this is that 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 righteous hatred that we have towards these other nations, man. Right? We can't endure to see the destruction of our people, like Asher brought out. Like Officer Asher brought out, they're they're chasing our steps, man. Right? And it's all due to our lack of hearkening and observing the commandments of the Most High, man. Right? The scriptures tell us, "He that feareth the Most High shall feel no evil thing." That's a very powerful scripture when you think about it, man. When you think about how the most I can really protect you going on and coming in. We, it says he was targeted. And, and, and I just wanted to, before I lose my train of thought, he said at the beginning of the video that, and as I read this article, it says that, um, 
I just highlighted it. It's, it's a lot. I just highlighted it. But um, it says the family says that they were told Carter may have been decapitated by wild animals following his death. And they're correct. Those wild animals was those white supremacists. Right. 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 Those right. were the beasts that that, decap that decapitated him. Right? And the Mosai has a specific judgment for those people, man. Right? Let me get the book of 2 Peter, chapter 2, verse 12. Right? The book of 2 Peter, chapter 2, verse 12. Right? Kind of, I got it. This is the book of 2 Peter, chapter 2, and verse 12. Right? But these are, but these as natural brute beasts uh -huh. made to be taken and destroyed, right? Speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, right? They shall utterly perish in their own corruption. They speak evil of the things that they understand not. Oh, we just with the Bible, right? We just end words with the Bible, right? End words with attitudes. They don't understand. That we teaching the judgment against them. Keep going. And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness. And they shall receive the reward of unrighteousness. What is that? That's the judgment. That's the destruction, the desolation that's coming to these other nations, man. Keep going. As they that counted pleasure to riot in the daytime. Right. Spots they are and blemishes. Sporting themselves with their own deceivings. While they feast with you. Right, they're going to be the same people that surround you when you go to the store and things like that. Right? But here's the point. Right? Verse, 5, verse 14. Having eyes full of adultery. Uh-huh. And that cannot cease from sin. They can do what? Cease from sin. They cannot cease from sin. Why? Because that's their nature. That's how they're created. They cannot cease from sin they cannot cease from sin this is how the most side this is the this is the description and the understanding of the nature of the idumians the nature of esau the nature of the edomites right one last scripture ecclesiastes 7 and, and, thir and, tw and 13 ecclesiastes uh, 7 and 13 it's the they book cannot of ecclesiastes cease from sinning man Right, keep going, King. Okay? This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7 and verse 13. Right. Consider the work of the Most High. For who can make that straight which he had made crooked? The Most High has made these people crooked. You can't pray for these people, man. You can't pray their wickedness away. They were estranged from the womb. This is their nature. This is their spirit. This, their soul that is lifted up is not upright Upright in them. It's their soul, their very nature that's corrupted. You cannot pray that away. Right? And with that, I you. Khan, before we get off the, um, the live, I just want to show the other two videos real quick and just kind of show the similarity of, you know, what the cycle is and what we're going through. Um, when our people get trodden down by our enemies, All right? It's actually, it's actually pretty sick. I, I would say that it's going into something that's mental, mentally wrong, man. All right, I've been fed lies, but go ahead, play that up. So that he can change it, can change your ways, no matter what happened to you. Go back, and probably like, okay. like 15, 20 seconds. Uh, this you is the family. Give you family. Dylan Ruth. Give you. All right, Dylan Maybe Ruth is somebody. So like it's Dylan Ruth is somebody who went into a church while they were praying once again. Right, everybody's head was down, and he murked everybody in the building. All right, and they took him to Burger King. You would think this is a joke. They took him to uh to get some food afterwards. Right, I think he killed all of these people. All right, this is sick. Right, um, press play up. 
would like you to take this opportunity to repent. Repent. <laughs> I think that was a good place, though. But we would like you to take this opportunity to repent. Salaki is not playing. Oh, Salak, I was on mute. I, I, I'm just, I'm just appalled about what he said. He said, "You should take this opportunity to repent." <laughs> That's madness. Right. That is madness. Wow. Repent. Confess. Give your life to. The one who matters the most, Christ, so that he can change it and change your ways no matter what happened to you, and you'll be okay. Do that, and you'll be better off than what you are right now. Iwan Sanders. Felicia Sanders. Thank you, Ms. Sanders, for being here. We welcome you Wednesday night in our Bible study with open eyes. I ain't going to lie. This is crazy. Crazy, y'all. I've never heard this. It's wild. What? <laughs> Yo, this is crazy. Man. Wait. You're saying we welcome you to our Wednesday night Bible study. Oh, man. We, and I then, and they wonder why. So... When people ask us, well, are the other nations allowed in your congregation? No. Simple. Absolutely not. Why? Because of these issues right here. Salaki, I got I to gotta bring out a precept. That is ridiculous, man. Imagine, imagine you got children, you got women, older women, elderly, in your body, in your congregation. And then some skinhead like this wants to come through and say, you know what? I'm taking all that. Nah, it ain't going down like that. But he can do that in the Christian church. You know why? Because Christians do not believe they have an enemy. Mm, their only enemy is the spiritual demon say That's it. Exactly. Right. That's it. And he ain't look, he looking like he don't give a damn about none what of that. Is that? Unfazed. That, when is this over? Unfazed. When is this over? Can I go back to prison now? Right. <laughs> That's pretty much what he's saying on his face. Invite you to the Bible study to learn what? You feel Yeah, I want to bring out a free sale. But, and, <laughs> and, and that's crazy too. And that's crazy too. They took him to they took him to Burger King, right? That's what I heard. It was a fast huh, they took him to Burger King. I, I believe it was Burger King. Huh, they took him to Burger King, King right at he probably was looking at these, he probably was looking at them wide eyed like these niggas crazy. Right. They was high five and whatnot. They was happy about right. that thing. That's insane, man. Con, can I bring out a free sale right quick? Con. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Can somebody, can somebody get uh, Deuteronomy 28, 28 real quick? Off the shelf. Con, this is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 28. The Most High right. shall smite thee with madness and blindness uh -huh. and, and astonishment of heart and blindness. Right, so, so the Most High spoke this family with blindness, madness, right? Because you can't tell me this is not madness. This is madness. We talking about they talking about we're gonna invite you to Bible study, right? And blindness of heart, right? And so when you think about they took this man to Burger King, think about when uh look at look at what happened to that guy that ran up on stage and attacked um um what's his name? Um Dave Chappelle. They beat that man, they had that man mingled. Think about any time somebody commits an offense against a police officer, how they beat that person to shreds. Right. And then when they go in and take them and they get that, that first picture when they get booked, they be bloody and beat the hell up. But they took this Edomite to Burger King, right? And this is the wickedness of our enemy. And this is the madness of our own people accepting these people and saying, oh, we forgive you, right? But when it comes to black on black um, situations, we were spinning the block. We're spending the block. We're loading up Dracos and Glocks and everything we got, and we're shooting up family members' houses. We'll get anybody we can to try to get back to that person. But when it comes to the white people or any other 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 nations, we're okay with it, and we're gonna forgive right. them. Right. Right. And, and these are the same people on the street that say you ain't got a heaven, no hell to put nobody in. 
right? This day justification. You ain't got no heaven. Or, this is ridiculous, man. You're going to invite them to your Bible study? What? That's just madness. Like, like, like Captain Zamar brought out, it's the madness of our people and the wickedness of the other nations. That is madness. It, it's crazy. Uh, Captain Zamar says something so powerful just now. He's like, you know, when police, when there's an offense against a police officer or something like that, you don't see a police officer praying about it afterwards. You know, you shoot at a police officer or something going, yo, you're you're done for. Right. Right. You don't see them holding hands, getting in a circle saying, Jesus will forgive them. I pray that you repent, brother. It's not yeah. happening that way. But then they expect us to do this. Come on, man. It don't make no sense. I, I just really it's just really shocking me because I never heard. I never knew like I never knew this happened. So this is crazy to me. Wednesday night with open arms. What? <laughs> um, you have killed some of the most beautiful people that I know. Every fiber in my body hurts, and and I'll never be the same. Tawanza Sanders is my son, but Tawanza was my hero. Tawanza was my hero, but. As we say in the Bible study, we enjoyed you, but may God have mercy on you. What the blazes and <laughs> blue moon is going oh, on? Man. May God have mercy on you. I've never heard any of, I've never seen any of the prophets saying that God have mercy on the enemy. Right. <laughs> and, this, you know what this kind of remark, makes me think of? The st the story with uh Reuben Reuben and and Levi, when Dinah was touched, did did those brothers forgive and forget what what uh what those people what that um those people did to Dinah? No, they remembered it, and it was seared in their brains, and they went to go handle business. Because of that, because because they know that if they didn't do nothing, it would have been a disrespect onto 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 their house, onto their whole family. That it would give them reason to keep doing uh vile things onto them. It's a respect aspect of, of it all. And for and for this to happen, you know, and and they're just so forgiving and and willing to and willing to let him join. Their their Wednesday classes is sickening. This is why this is why none of the nations respect us at all because we don't give no pushback or any type of 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 act of showing don't mess with our people. This is why none of the nations respect us at all. None. Slack. I I in my I in my point my rant. Con. This is madness. Your name, ma'am? Alana Simmons. Thank you, Ms. Simmons, for being here. Your statement, please. Although my grandfather and the other victims died at the hands of hate, this is proof. Everyone's plea for your soul is proof that they, they lived in love and their legacies will live in love. So hate won't win and i just want to thank the courts for making sure that hate doesn't win thank you ma'am for being here your name please ma'am thank you for being here with my sister and i too thank you on the behalf of my family for not allowing hate to win for me i'm a work in progress and I acknowledge that I am very angry. But one thing the pain has always joined in in our family with is that she taught me that we are the family that love built. We have no room for hate. So we have to forgive. Mm. Pray God on your soul. Mm. Stop right there. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. 
Hold on, hold on. I gotta get a precept. I gotta get a precept. Let me get. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read this real quick. This, this is, is pretty rough. Huh? I'm not yeah. gonna lie. This it's bad. Rough. Because what they're doing is contrary to the scriptures, and these are people who attended Bible study. So you have to ask yourself, what are they learning in Bible study? And I'm not getting on the people, man. These are things that they learn. But this is why it's so important for us to be in the highways and byways and to be on these YouTubes and these lives and these streams and to push the Bible so hard because people have learned falsely, right? Let's see what they should have been praying for. Psalms 109. Let's start at verse, uh, I'm going to start at verse, uh, I got it. I'll start at verse two. Con, I got it. Con. This is the book of Psalms chapter 109 verse two. For the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful, deceitful are open against me. Mm -hmm. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. All right. They compass me about also with words of hatred. Context here is an enemy, somebody that has hatred for, for a servant, for the Lord's people. All right. It says they compass me about Ooh. with words of hatred. Read on. And fought against me without a cause. Mm -hmm. For my love, they are my adversaries. Talk mm -hmm. about it. Talk to them. But I give myself unto prayer. Right. Watch this. Read on. And they have rewarded, remor rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love. Man, these right. Read on. Crazy. Set thou a wicked man over him. This is what they should have been praying for. Right? If I'm in court, this is what I'm saying. Ain't nothing wrong with praying. But these are the things I'm praying for when somebody kills a family member or you do me wrong or you do something that is utterly against uh, what the Most High commanded us to be towards each other. It says, set thy wicked man over him. Read on. And let Satan stand at his right hand. Mm -hmm. When he shall be judged... Let him be condemned. No, nah, let him let God have mercy on his soul. Let him be condemned. Let him be condemned. That's what they should have been saying in the court, man. Read on. And let his prayer become sin. Keep reading. Let his days be few. And let another take his office. Right? Let his days be few and let let somebody else replace him on this earth. Keep reading. Let his children be fatherless. Mm -hmm. And his wife a widow. So not only for him, they're praying against the generations of his people. Talk about it. Bring it out, Doc. They praying for praying against people that got nothing to do with the matter. She said, he said, let his, his children, children be fatherless. fatherless. And his wife a widow. Read on. Let his children be continually vagabonds. Mm. And beg. Let them seek their bread also out of their desolate places oh man that's deep we're gonna stop right there God, that's we deep. keep going but oh, how do y'all pray to the most high man right that's, how you how that's, you that's what we're supposed to be teaching our people man right that's the righteous judgment that's written about in the scriptures con right this sick man this is sick. I don't know how, how much further you want to go in the video. I know I had one more video before we end the uh, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, the stream. Come on, let's just play the the, the, the both them genism. We got the the the, the 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 I got to coin a term for that for the 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 both themisms. Man, the 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 both themism. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to. Pray, but this right here was a spirit. The both them gene spirit. Right. I can't even make the brother speak yet. Hold on. It's just what can, why do you feel as if you have to take the high route? Quote, unquote. Psalms 109 is perfectly put. Right. It's just perfectly put. No, this is what, this is, this is what we want to happen. Let his days be few. Let his children be fatherless. So let them be a vagabond. A, 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 a vagabond. A vagabond. vagabond. Right. <laughs> right. Let his posterity, verse 13, so lucky. Let his posterity be cut off, and in the generation following, let their name be blotted out. Come on, now. Right? Come on. Verse 15, let them be 
before the Most High continually that he may be cut off the memory of them from the earth. Verse 16, because that he remembered not to show mercy. You wanted him to show mercy, but no, he remembered not to show mercy. But persecuted the poor and needy man that he might even slay the broken in heart. Man, this is this is cold. Dang. That's deep. Huh? That's deep. That's deep. You can't. That's straight out the scriptures, man. Right. What Bible are they reading? What are they reading? Hold on. I I, I gotta I gotta bring a point out. Salakia, before you know, I, I gotta bring a point out right quick. Right? I, I gotta bring a point out. One second. Salakia, I just want to make a point here. Right. I just want to make a point here because a lot of people, like you just brought up, what are they reading? Right, what are they reading? I, I just want—I just want everyone to understand what where this inspiration is coming from. Um, and I want to get a precept, Salakia family. I—I I, just—I just need to really demonstrate this. Can I get the book of Hebrews, chapter three, verse seven? Right. I, I just want to show a point here. Just to show you that these same scriptures are equally inspired. Right. I just want to give one point. Hebrews 3 and 7. I just want to get a point off about this, about this book of Psalms 109. Because I want to I want you to understand where this inspiration of Psalms 109 is coming from. Right? Psalms uh, uh Hebrews 3 and 7. Con, I got you up. Right. This is Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 7. Uh-huh. Wherefore, as the Holy Spirit said, today, if you will hear the hear his voice. Th this is my point. We're bringing this scripture out. Harden. Salaki, okay. Salaki, go ahead. The point of Hebrews 3, why I'm bringing this out, is that Hebrews is telling you that. Because he's quoting a, a, a passage out of Psalms. And Hebrews, when you talk about what's being quoted in Hebrews 3 and 7 through 8, that's a passage out of Psalms. And wh who's speaking in these Psalms? It says the Holy Spirit saith these things. So that's showing you what in the book of Psalms 109 that is inspired by the Holy Spirit for those words to be written down. To wish that they should be cut off continually. The author of Hebrews is acknowledging, showing you that the book of Psalms is being written through the Holy Spirit. So don't let nobody tell you that the book of Psalms is not. So when he's writing about these people being cut off continually, guess what? That's inspired by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Right? Let's keep going on that. On to say twice or for the hundredth time what you've or how much you've taken from us. I think you know that. But I just I hope you go to God with all what all the guilt all the thing the bad things you may have done in the past each and every one of us may have done something that we're not supposed to do if you truly are sorry I know I can speak for myself I I forgive you and I know if you go to God and ask him, he will forgive you. And I don't think anyone could say it. Again, I'm speaking for myself, not even bad for my family. But I love you just like anyone else. And I'm not gonna say I hope you rot and die just like my brother did, but I see I I personally want the best for you. And I, I wasn't gonna ever say this in front of my family or anyone, but I don't even want you to go to jail.
It's getting, oh, yeah, let me, you know, keep it family friendly. I'm trying to keep it family friendly. Family friendly. Family friendly in the chat. Got to keep it family friendly. Right? This is crazy. Ooh. I want the best for you. Because I know that's what that's exactly what both of them would want you to do. And the best would be give your life to Christ. I'm not going to say anything else. I think giving your life to Christ would be the best thing that both of them would want you to do. Again, I love you as a person. And I don't wish anything bad on you. I don't know if this is possible, but can can I give her a hug, please? Please. Yes. I, I got uh, I got no words. Yeah, man. I'm speechless. That, that that's the spirit of neither Jew nor Greek. That's the spirit of yeah. That's the spirit of John three sixteen. No, John three sixteen. That's that's where that's coming yeah. from. Yeah. Salakia. I will not be teaching my children to move that way. Right. Salakia. Y'all can teach your y'all can teach y'all children to be defenseless. Right. Mm. Y'all could y'all could teach that. That's not. But but for me in my household. We shall we serve, serve the Lord. Lord we shall serve the Lord, man. Come, on. right? Come, on. powerful, powerful, powerful class. Brothers brought up excellent, beautiful precepts, right? You know, I pray everybody was edified. That's Psalms one hundred nine, one through seventeen, y'all. We got to me- remember to read that, right? We got to remember to keep that in our spirit, right? Psalms one hundred nine, one through seventeen. Right, all praise to the most high to the power of every mosque and Jacob. Right, so I pray that everybody was, you know, that tuned in was, you know, edified, you know, educated. These spirit, these scriptures resonated with your spirit. And like we brought out, the book of Hebrews tells you that these scriptures that's written in the Psalms are inspired by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, the things that are written are inspired by the Holy Spirit. Psalms 139 is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Psalms 109 is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Right? The spirit that they claim that they have. So let's read these verses that's inspired by the Holy Spirit. Right? Khan. All praise to the Most High, to the power of every Isaac and Jacob. You know, to water for tuning in. You know, um, you know, we appreciate everybody that continues to tune in. You know, if you guys see anything throughout in, in anything throughout the week, definitely, you know, put it put it on the comment board, comment. You know, we could definitely, you know, look into it, probably do a class on it, break it down through the spirit, right? You know, you know, TikTok and things like that. Got a whole lot of doctrines and Christian teachers on there, but we definitely want to go, you know, through it and you know, break down these strongholds and bring our people out of these philosophies and traditions of men. You know, all praise to the most out to the poverty rising in Jacob. You know, I just want to say this. We got to remember that the most I says Satan cometh immediately. I say this for everyone and for myself. Satan cometh immediately. We have to be sober and vigilant, vigilant, right? Let me get the book of first Peter chapter four, verse eight. Brother Gusha. Khan, this is the book of first Peter chapter four and verse eight. So lucky. Let me just make sure that's what I want. One second. That's definitely not what I want. Um, Book of First Peter chapter five verse eight. Come, this is the book of First Peter chapter five and verse eight. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Right, we have to be sober and vigilant, right? Because that enemy is like a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking 
whom he may devour. Right? We have to stay prayed up and stay girded up in these last days. Or we can't turn back and turn into a pillar of salt. We have to continue to move forward and stay on that righteous path. This is the condition of the battle. Right? And if brothers have any closing statements, y'all can bring it up. What are you? It's a lot. No cooning. <laughs> no cooning. It's a lot. No cooning on this Yo, side. Uh, uh, okay, I, you know what's crazy? I was about to bring this out. I was about to bring this out right here. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to bring this out. Hold on. No cooning, man. No cooning. Ifa Tunde Ogunta Day and the International Movement for the Independence and Protection of African People. You have hereby been excommunicated from the African race, and we have rebirthed you into the European power. Right. There ain't no more cooning, man. Yeah. Oh, no more cooty, man. Uh, no cooty now man. grafted into the other nations. Right. That's how you want to move. <laughs> no All right. right. Con. All we praise to the most like to the part. Everybody, Isaac and Jacob. Con. And with that, um, Con, I say shalom to the 12 tribes of Israel and death and destruction of Babylon. Shalom. Shalom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.